Hello everyone welcome back to the Tools of War channel. The first V-22 was rolled out to the public in May 1988, but changing priorities that year led the US Army to pull out of the program. Skyrocketing development costs, the development budget was first set at $2.5 billion in 1986 but ballooned to a projected $30 billion in 1988, led SEC Def Dick Cheney, yep, that Dick Cheney, to try to defund the Osprey program multiple times from 1989 to 1992, but he was overruled by congressional vote. The DoD instructed the Navy not to spend any more money on the program, but Congress provided unrequested program funding. How often does that happen? And after studies showed that the V-22 provided more operational effectiveness and expanded capabilities with similar operating costs compared to current options, the Clinton administration later supported the program and helped it gain still more funding. Two of the prototype aircraft crashed in 1991, several injuries, in 1992, seven fatalities, and flights were stopped while the V-22 was redesigned to reduce empty weight, simplify manufacture, improve safety, and reduce build costs. The resulting V-22B resumed testing in June 1993. Bell Boeing received a contract for the Engineering Manufacturing Development EMD, phase in June 1994, and all prototypes were modified up to the V-22B configuration. Due to the end of the Cold War and changing military and public perception in the 1990s, the V-22 faced a perpetual sword of Damocles, which threatened more intensely as testing fell behind schedule. The first low-level production Osprey wasn't delivered until May 1999. Unfortunately in 2000 there were two high-profile V-22 crashes in April, 19 fatalities, and December, 4 fatalities both of which grounded the platform while investigations were performed. By now, we were approaching nearly 20 years of funding and development of the V-22, and it still hadn't entered general operational service. But the hits just keep on coming. In 2001, Lieutenant Colonel Odin Lieberman, commander of the V-22 squadron at Marine Corps Air Station New River, was relieved of duty after allegations that he instructed his unit to falsify maintenance records to make the Osprey appear more reliable. Dude, seriously? Three of his officers were also implicated for their roles in the records falsification scandal. Not a good way to win the public's hearts and minds. After 9-11, the US Congress and the public's perspective and prioritization of military spending changed in a big way, and by June 2005, the V-22 had completed its final operational evaluations, including long-range deployments, high-altitude flight, desert and shipboard operations, and had undergone multiple improvements. All problems previously identified were reportedly resolved, and the Osprey was deemed ready for service by the U.S. Marine Corps, receiving its first combat deployment to Iraq in April 2007. But the Osprey's troubles were far from over. In October 2007, Mark Thompson wrote an article for Time magazine entitled, V-22 Osprey. A flying shame, in which the author condemned the V-22 as unsafe, overpriced, and inadequate for its intended purposes. Multiple news organizations piled on and published similar reports, possibly in an effort to increase their ratings, no news agency would ever do that, right? The USMC's Marine Corps Times responded in December 2007 that the Time article's data was at least partly obsolete and the report was inaccurate, further pointing out that the report held unrealistically high expectations for any new type of aircraft. Critics continued through the years to point out that the Osprey is expensive to maintain, and operational readiness is historically lower than traditional helicopters. For example, the USMC's required Osprey fleet readiness, mission-capable rate was set at 82%, but the average was 53% from June 2007 to May 2010. It has improved dramatically since. Another issue is the weight of the Osprey requires powerful engines and large rotors, which produce high velocity, intense rotor wash which causes multiple issues compared to a traditional helicopter. Dust and debris can be a real issue, and due to the intense rotor wash, troops must deploy using fast roping from higher altitudes than with helicopters, which can increase the potential for injury or death in a fall. Furthermore, this high temperature, high heat jet wash of the V-22's turboprops when angled downward for V, stalled takeoffs and landings tears up carrier decks and airbase tarmac which increases maintenance and repair costs for ships and ground crews. 
Acquisition and maintenance costs are considered high, and as has been noted above, the Osprey program has had a lot of issues sticking to a budget throughout the lifetime of the project. Others point out that the Osprey is so wide that it potentially restricts operational usage because of its twin rotor nacelles on the end of its wings. The craft is 57 feet long, shorter than a Black Hawk's 65 feet, and 22 feet high with its engines rotated vertically, but it's a not insignificant 84 feet wide measured from the outside edges of its propellers, while a Black Hawk's rotor disc measures just over 53 feet. Proponents have argued that since the Osprey carries more passengers, a crew of 4 plus 24 troops, double that of the Black Hawk, it effectively can get more done with fewer craft, but the fact is that the helicopter can objectively land in narrower spaces. The back and forth sniping from public and military media still continues, particularly when there's a report of a mechanical issue, like the recent clutch problem highlighted by the Air Force or the four fatal Osprey crashes in training exercises over the past two years. See below for more details. One of the main reasons is because the Osprey has developed an unofficial reputation as a dangerous aircraft for several potential reasons, which we'll go into below. But first, let's look at how groundbreaking the V-22 actually is. Thank you for watching until the end. Don't subscribe, like, share and comment.